the origin of whitefish. An Indian who lived in the far north was so devoted to the chase that he was never at home for the whole of a day, to the sorrow of his two boys, who liked nothing so much as to sport with him and to be allowed to practice with his weapons. Their mother told them that on no account were they to speak to him of the young man who visited the lodge while their father was away, and it was not until they were well grown and knew what the duty of wives should be that they resolved to disobey her. The hunter struck the woman dead when he learned of her perfidy. So greatly did her spirit trouble them, however, that they could no longer abide in their old home in peace and comfort, and they left the country and journeyed southward until they came to the Sault Ste. Marie. As they stood beside the falls, a head came rolling toward them on the earth, the head of the dead woman. At that moment, too, a crane was seen striding on the surface of the water, whirling about in its strongest eddies, and when one of the boys called to it, O oh, grandfather, we are persecuted by a spirit, take us across the falls. The crane flew to them. Cling to my back and do not touch my head, it said to them, and landed them safely on the farther shore. But now the head screamed, Come, grandfather, and carry me over, for I have lost my children and am sorely distressed. And the bird flew to her likewise. Be careful not to touch my head, it said. The head promised obedience, but succumbed to curiosity when halfway over and touched the bird's head to see what was the matter with him. With a lurch, the crane flung off his burden and it fell into the rapids. As it swept down, bumping against the rocks, the brains were pounded out and strewn over the water. You were useless in life, cried the crane. You shall not be so in death. Become fish. And the bits of brain changed to row that presently hatched to a delicate white fish, the flesh whereof is esteemed by Indians of the lakes and white men likewise. The family pitched a lodge near the spot and took the crane as their totem or name mark. Many of their descendants bear it to this day.